So I saw a really interesting article recently being shared about how Bitcoin is a religion, literally. I read the points and I'm like, hmm, this is so fascinating and true too. Whether you're a newbie or a veteran in the Bitcoin space, this is definitely an interesting topic to think about. So if you want to analyze with me all the parts of Bitcoin that make it similar to other major religions around the world, then just sit back, relax, and just keep on watching. Welcome back to Bitcoin for Beginners. I'm your host, Kevin, and in this channel, we're all about deep research, honest opinions, with no frills nor fluff. As always, I leave timestamps down below in case you want to skip around. And while you're watching this video, if I'm able to pique your interest or curiosity at all, then please just smash that like button and I'd appreciate that immensely. Okay, so now let's dissect religions piece by piece and see how Bitcoin fits or doesn't fit the bill. And I also want to give a shout out to the original author of this Bitcoin is a religion piece, Joe Weisenthal. He wrote on Bloomberg and I'll link his original piece down below in the description as well. So the first aspect of many major religions is a prophet like Jesus and so forth. And in Bitcoin's case, we have Satoshi, an anonymous figure with mysterious origins. Remember, he published a white paper in a cryptography mailing list all the way back in 2008. He mined the Genesis block himself, and Satoshi included a message in the Genesis block about bank bailouts. He then collaborated online with early community members for a few years and then left, never to be heard from again. He was also a benevolent figure. He mined 1 million early Bitcoins, which would now make him a multi-billionaire, but he never spent them at all. And we can tell this by looking at the blockchain. Another aspect of Bitcoin that's similar to religion is its immaculate conception, right? We think about how like the birth of Jesus happened. And in this case, Bitcoin also had a really clean and like miraculous conception per se insofar as Satoshi mined himself to kickstart the network, but then he stopped after there was enough other people involved in providing hash rate. There was no pre-mine, no ICO, unlike most other crypto projects, and anyone initially could mine Bitcoin with the software available. They also had faucets available to give people free Bitcoin for those who were interested to play around with it. So this was the ultimate fair distribution not like a lot of other projects that just stand to enrich their founders' pockets, per se. Bitcoin also had a sacred text, much like the Quran, the Bible, and so forth. In this case, it was a short nine-page white paper, and we have people framing it on their wall because they love it so much. They also read and refer to it periodically and pull out portions of it to make a point in a public statement or debate, per se. Now, besides the main text, there's also some mystic text that maybe people find some scrolls in tombs, per se, in other religions. But in Bitcoin's case, we had early posts on the Bitcoin Talk forums these covered topics like scaling, network security, future rewards, and so forth, and became relevant years later. So people scour these early posts for hints and clues as to how to operate and what path to support. Much like other religions, Bitcoin also had respected early disciples, right? And these were early members that are revered for their contributions. Many worked with Satoshi himself online, and these include people like Hal Finney, who was a computer scientist, a cypherpunk, and received the first Bitcoin transaction from Satoshi. Some people even said that he was Satoshi, but he denied it. Gavin Andreessen also became the lead developer of the Bitcoin code base after Satoshi disappeared. And before Satoshi left, he gave Gavin access to the code base and a copy of the alert key. Jeff Garzik was also instrumental as a software engineer and was a huge contributor to the Bitcoin code base along with Satoshi and Gavin. And there were other notable people like Mike Hearn, Adam Back, etc. Bitcoin also has holidays every year, much like religious holidays like Hanukkah, Christmas, and so forth, right? For example, Having Day. Every 210,000 blocks mined, roughly four years, Bitcoin's mining reward is cut in half, and that is the day of the halving. And Bitcoin's birthday on January 3rd is when the first Bitcoin was mined. And also some people made it proof of keys day in which you pull your funds from exchanges to make sure that they have the coins they claim. On October 31st, there is the white paper launch date when Satoshi first posted the white paper to the mailing list. And then May 22nd is pizza day. This is when a guy paid 10,000 Bitcoins for two Papa John's pizzas delivered to him. And this was all done through the Bitcoin talk forums way back when Bitcoin barely costed anything. And it was more so to spur on adoption. 
Like many famous religions, there has been big schisms in the Bitcoin space too. Just thinking about common cases in religion, you had Catholics and Protestants split apart. In the Bitcoin space, you had the Bitcoin versus Bitcoin Cash civil war that led to a hard fork and two separate blockchains as well. This was a long and heated debate that really split the community. And what caused it is that Bitcoin had trouble scaling and people wanted bigger blocks to hold more transactions, while other people wanted to keep the blocks small and implement upgrades like segregated witness. During this debate, a lot of people brought up points like what Satoshi, their prophet, said and what the white paper, the holy text, said to prove their points during the debate. Now, like other religions too, they have many claims to the throne. People who claim that they were the prophet who has come back to earth, for example. In Bitcoin's case, the most famous case of this was Craig Wright, still ongoing. He's an Australian computer scientist and businessman who has claimed for years to be Satoshi and has still not given up on that. He's gotten a lot of media exposure, elaborate stories, and ongoing lawsuits involving him surrounding this claim. Most people in the crypto space, besides the Bitcoin SV crowd, do not believe Craig Wright's claims. It's also important to note that he could just sign some message with Satoshi's key to prove that he is once and for all, but he hasn't been able to do so yet for multiple reasons that he claims. There has also been other fake Toshis over the years. For example, a guy in just the last few years from the UK, he calls himself James Bilal Khan, who put out a three-part blog saying that he's Satoshi. A lot of people instantly dove into his claims and pointed out a lot of inconsistencies. But it's funny that he even shilled a new crypto project at the end of his post, so I personally don't give him any credence at all. Another common part of religions is hatred and condemnation of non-believers saying that they're going to go to hell, for example. In this case, Bitcoiners call a lot of people who like altcoins shitcoiners and say that their investments are going to be bound to go to zero as Bitcoin is the only true blockchain that is worthy of anything. They also ostracize former Bitcoiners who have started supporting other coins as well, for example, Raul Pal. And they also call people who don't like Bitcoin and don't have any Bitcoin, no coiners, and they make fun of them when Bitcoin does well. For example, Noriel Rubini, Peter Schiff, and so forth. Much like other religions, Bitcoin also has a lot of unique sayings and incantations like to the moon, huddle until Lambos, hyper Bitcoinization, FUD, FOMO, wrecked, and not your keys, not your coins. This is similar to many other religions that have their own unique phrases, own unique terms that don't mean anything outside of it. Like other religions that paint a glorious picture of heaven or life after earth, Bitcoin also paints a picture of the promised land, right? That our Bitcoin will go to the moon, we'll be able to buy and drive Lambos if we invest in Bitcoin early enough. They also paint a picture of good versus evil, heaven versus hell, like angels versus demons, for example. In this case, Bitcoin is the opposite side of the evil government currency, or fiat is what we call it. This was even written in the first block mined by Satoshi about bank bailouts and essentially disliking the mismanagement of a country's money. Many Bitcoiners also say that the US dollar is like monopoly money and not backed by anything since leaving the gold standard. They also point to other countries having hyperinflation like Venezuela and their currency being used as toilet paper now and essentially worthless. They also point to government printing boatloads of money during this recent pandemic as to why Bitcoin is needed as hard money. And a funny running theme and running joke is the Bitcoiners hate of fiat. And even the fiat car brand posted about it saying, why do crypto people hate them so much? Which is pretty funny in my book. Now, a lot of religions also have dietary customs, whether it's being vegetarian, like in Buddhism, or not eating cows in Hinduism, or halal, and so forth, right? In Bitcoin's case, there is even a sect of Bitcoiners that eat a carnivore diet that's only meat. They say that modern food is artificial, just like modern money is. And there's several prominent Bitcoiners advocating this, like Saifedean Amos, Tone Vase, Jimmy Song, and so forth. And at their Bitcoin meetups and events, they bring people out to steakhouses and only eat meat, essentially. Last but not least, there's also public conversion events. Like in religions, when people convert, they make a big deal out of it. They invite their friends and family and community, and they also post about it on social media sometimes openly. And that's also the case in the Bitcoin space. People make such a big deal saying that they have converted to the Bitcoin way, that they were wrong about it before, and a lot of people tweet about it, make videos about it, and so forth. So 
that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this, maybe learned something, or just were entertained about this analysis about how Bitcoin is in many ways similar to a real religion. What do you think about this though? Please let me know down in the comments below. Please like this video to support me and this channel. I'm Kevin. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I'll catch you guys next time.